This is a different type of video than what I usually do. Uh, typically, I will create dead by daylight content. However, um, a lot of people have been asking how to my dead by daylight thumbnails. I'm going to show you a step by step breakdown on how I create dead by daylight thumbnails. So, for example, look at Freddy Krueger there. This is where I had four survivors who were just absolutely annihilating me in the game. And I wanted to use that thumbnail as an example so yes so i extracted the game files from dead by daylight put them into blender and then posed the models how i felt they should be so as you can see here we're in blender and you know it doesn't have to be perfect i don't have it perfect as long as what i want as the photo is looking pretty good that is all that matters so i'm going to show you uh, how i get the game files where i get them from what softwares i use and i'll also put links below uh, I'm not going to do a speedy run through. Uh, some videos you'll get well, they just fly through it and you won't really see it. I'll do it in the same speed as I normally would, just so you're able to kind of mimic and get an idea and a sense of direction of what I'm doing, okay? Now, the first software I use is UE Viewer. It was a bug, uh, so there is a patch file that you do need to get. It's called Unmodel Windows 32. You can get that on uh, GitHub and things like that. Uh, I'll get that link below. There has been an updated version. I'm currently not running that. As, uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Now, you're going to want to get your Dead by Daylight Steam library local file. So wherever you've got your games located. So mine is in my D drive. You've got your Steam library, Steam apps, Common, and Dead by Daylight. I'm not going to take you through to the directory itself because I've just got personal photos, videos, and files, and whatnot. So if you go to the to where your Steam library is located, go to Steam Apps, Common, and then Dead by Daylight. You're going to want to then paste that into UE Viewer. Once you've pasted that, it will then bring up this other screen. Now, everything that you need really is going to be hidden under characters. If you're only going to be wanting to model characters, this is purely what this video is for. However, there are other things. You know, you can get the maps, you can get items. Uh, you can get crates, you can get generators, you can get lights, you can get hooks. You can get anything, everything that was in within DBD and extract that using a UV, UV viewer. So we're going to focus in on a character. The character today we're going to focus in on is going to be... Hmm, let's have a think. We'll put it as ghosty. Now you may be wondering, bloody hell, mate, all these names and all, are all like k32 k34 k26 oma nurse well we know what the nurse is michael myers sweden sandman trapper ukraine they're all different names um and i've got a word file so in this word file i've got a, a list it's, it's an old list but i've got a list of all the characters and what they are called where you get the the specific items and what you need so, yeah, so it gives you everything you need and what you need as well. So, like, it's got, I broke it down and got everything that's needed. So, over time, I've just basically compiled everything that is needed. And then, you just, just kind of saved it. Just, okay, so for today's example, we're going to use Ghostface. Is titled Oman. So, when we're looking into the directory of the killers, we want to look for Oman. Now, there is another subfolder in there, but we're not going to be looking for that. We are purely going to be focusing in on the models. So here you go, it's models. Then it's broke down bodies, masks. But what we're going to do is we want to right click on the models folder. And then we're going to open folder content. And then we're just going to go to Unreal Engine 4.27. We're going to extract that. Maybe maybe wondering what, what what's what's this? I can't I can't really see anything. So first things first, we are going to go include meshes. So we want to go to navigate, include meshes. Once we've done that, we can we can kind of scroll through this screen by pressing page up and page down. So page up. And page down. So that is kind of how we kind of get backwards and forwards to navigate the actual software. So we're navigating the software with page up and page down. Now, if we want to keep something, if we want to keep something to extract, we want to press control and T. We want to tag it. That's what we want to do. So for this instance, we're going to take the scary movie mask, control T. You can tell you've tagged it because it saves it here. This is where you tag that and goes. 
And then we're going to keep going. See how it doesn't move now? It just stays there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to find out which outfit we want. Um, we'll have Iceman Ghosty. And I'm going to Control T. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to export current object. As we can see here, I've got previous items we're going to do. I'm just going to call this YouTube. And I'm going to export that. Okay, so now the file is exported. What we also want to do is we want to make sure that we get the skeleton as well. So we're going to go to open package. And here we can see there's a skeleton. Just right click that and then export that as well. And I'll just send it to the directory as well. Because what you don't want to do is you do not want to have the situation where you don't have a skeleton. Because then you won't be able to pose them as you wish. So we're going to close this. And we're going to start a new one. So a new. We're going to exit out of that. Now there are add-ons that you need to install within Blender that make your life a lot easier. Uh, without these add-ons, you'll be having to add the, the image files and the, the colors yourself. Whereas by having these, it will save you so much time and you, you just have more fun with uh, creating the actual characters. So we've got Fuse Skeleton. I tend to not use Fuse Skeleton, but it is there if I need it. That's basically if you want to put the skeletons together. Uh, you've got UE Viewer as well. So this one is where you colorize the skins and it will just pull it for you. And then PSK and PSA, this basically imports the mesh file and then the, the, the subsequent skeleton. So you're then able to have <coughs> you're then able to have the characters within the game. So first things first, we're gonna move it to mesh. We're gonna go import PSK. Now so we went to the F drive and we had the directory called the Blender DVD stuffs. As you can see, I've done multiple over the times, so you know, just just playing around on stuff. And then this one is called a YouTube. We're going to go to game, we're going to go to characters, slashes, the name of the slasher, which was Oman, aka Ghostface. And then we're going to go to models. You can see the skeleton file is now there. And then we're going to import the masks and the bodies. De depending on the survivor, depending on the killer, you may have more masks, you may have more bodies, you may have more, more apertures, you may have more arms and legs and stuff like that you need to do. <clears throat> but in this instance, we've only got one mask and we've got one body. Okay, so as you can see, we have now just imported Ghostface's mask, relatively pain-free. And there we go, we've got the silly goofy one. We're going to need to import the body. And then we've got the body. And we've got the mask. Now, how do we pose it? That's, that's one of the questions. So we'll figure out how we're going to import the skeleton. Uh, first things first, we're going to shade and we're going to smooth it. So right-click. Shade smooth. The reason for that is you'll have the little triangular textures and you don't really want that. Now we're going to import skeleton. So we're going to click over to skeleton. And you go import. And then we're going to go to the skeleton option. And then as you can see up here, we have now got body, mask, skeleton. So what you want to do is you want to click on the mask. Con press control. You want to click on mask, body, then skeleton. And then come back over to the main page. Right click, and then we're going to go to parent with empty groups, and then this is now grouped it. Now, to see if it's worked, what you want to do is you want to click on see these lines here, these lines are the skeleton. If they highlighted yellow or orange, uh, if they highlighted orange, then you're able to then move the body, you're able to figure out how to move the body. What you to test it works. Go to the top here where it says object. You want to go into pose mode. And now we've got loads of different arrows and icons that we can see if we can pose it. Now, if you've blended the skeleton to the body correctly, you should now be able to pose the character. So here you go. Here's the icons here. I tend to use this one a lot to spin them. So that one there, can you see his shoulder blades moving? Couldn't really see that a lot, but we'll just check some where else is moving. Let's see if his arm moves. So as we can see now, we're now able to move his arm so we got full control of this character now we've got the skeleton and we can now see how we got this moving around this is because it's just the clothing this one is for the clothing so if you do want to move the elbow the clothing also has to move as well you don't really want to have it just doesn't look like it's you know it doesn't look normal it doesn't look like the character is supposed to be doing that so we're going to just take that back so as you can see we have now got full control over how we're going to change the character so we can move the head so if you want to have them look down here, you can do that. 
He's going to move his body. You can move it around. You can pose that character however you wish. You know, you've got each individual finger. You can zoom in. And just so you've got full control on what you want to do. So however you want that character to look and how you want that character to, to behave is you've got full control. But the one thing that is missing is color. Um, uh, so what am I going to do about the color? How am I going to colorize it? So they got the globes up here. If I click that, as you can see, it's just it's just white. It's got it's got nothing. He's got no he's got no color. It's got nothing about him. This is where UE comes in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add color to the character. And the way they're going to do that is we're going to highlight the areas that we want to color. So we want to color. So we're going to turn off the skeleton. We're going to just color the mask and his outer side. So we're going to control. So we're going to click the mask. And we're going to colorize the mask. And then we're going to colorize the body as well. So we're going to highlight both of them. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the F drive where we extracted the game file to. Um, and we're going to set on the YouTube power. We're not going to go into engine. We're not going to go into game. We're going to click accept. Then what we're going to do is we're going to click add shader to multiple materials. It doesn't colorize the whole thing. We're going to go on to the second one. And then we're going to get that shader done there. So as you can see now, we've got a colored ghost face. So he's now fully colored. He's not he's not pale no more. He's actually got a bit more a bit more character about him. And we want to bring the skeleton back now. So we brought the skeleton back now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on there. We're gonna go back to pose mode. And then as you can see, you know, the clothing, we got control of the clothing, we got control of the hands, of the arms. You know, we're 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 fully in control of how we want it. So it depends on what you've got on your character, on on your gameplay, and whatnot. You can have full control over Ghostface or any character. And then that is how I do that. Now, if I want to extract that to a thumbnail to put into Photoshop, what I want to do is if you press F12, that'll render an image. Now, you may be thinking, bloody hell's a bit far away. There's a camera up here. This camera here is what you want to move. So click on the camera, come out of pose mode, and then what you want to do is you want to move the camera to where you want to position. So we're just going to move this around. And now if I press F12 again, we're in front of him. So that camera has complete control over everything. So you can have depth of field. So however you want. So whatever you put this camera is basically how your thumbnail is going to look. So think about how that thumbnail is going to look. Think about what you're going to do with it. I'm going to tilt it up, tilt it up. You know what I mean? If you want it, if you want it at an angle, put it at an angle. So however you want to do that, you can do that. Nope, I'm a bit too high there. Just like that. Then lighting. Lighting is very important. Without it, you're not going to see your character. So we're going to go to add at the top. Light. Point. Make that a little bit bigger. And we're also going to move it as well. F12. And we start to add more and more depth to the image. We're going to go light point. We're going to also have sun as well. Because you've got to have a bit of sun, haven't you? So I'm not looking too, uh, too pale. And every time I do that, I just add and press F12. Because what I want to do is I just want to make sure that I'm not drowning things out. So as you can see, now we've got that. Now, one thing we'll notice is the background is fully done. So if I was to save this now, it wouldn't be transparent. So what you want to look for is on your collection here, you're going to go to the image, and you want to search for transparent. So transparent is here. Boom. And then that's what we'll do, is we're going to go boom. And then now we've got a transparent image, which makes it a lot easier to export. So we're going to go image. Save as, and we'll put this on a desktop so we're not going up, rooting around on the computer. And we'll just call this a ghosty test. Let's save that. Now our image is ready for Photoshop.